that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ. Hold that thought. The Christ, but hold the thought. The Son of God, let's start there. Because the Christ comes after we know who he really is. In other words, God becomes the Christ. The story of God becoming the Christ. If the Lamb was slain before the foundations of the world, in other words, before that beginning, he was Christ. Before the beginning, he was Christ. He was not just the Son of God, he was Christ. That plan was hatched way back, way back. That's why when he starts this, he starts up with the identity. Because to him, all these two things go hand in hand. And that's why when he's closing, he's putting them hand in hand. That you may know that is the Christ, the Son of God. So, two says, the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. Look at it from this perspective. The Father... Are born again, they have a desire towards the things of God. That is one mark of a Christian. When you say you're born again, it means you've been born again. Like born a second time. But this time it's different from the first one because this time you've been born with different desires, with different perspectives. That is what we call regeneration. From that point, the Holy Spirit his main duty and his main work, that is why Jesus had to go so that he can come, is that he makes you to be more like Christ. That is the process of sanctification. Now, regeneration happens initially so that sanctification can happen. Sanctification cannot happen to a heart that has not been regenerated. That is why no matter how much people are not born again try to be good, they just can't do it. You can't be good enough, you know, for you to be transformed. You have to be regenerated for you. It's like a platform, you know. You you have to have like a you know a landing pad for the helicopter to land, you know. So the landing pad on this part is salvation. If you don't have it, then you just it will just be hovering around until it crashes, and that is basically the systems of the world. Mora- there's a book here in it. Um, uh, created from animals. This one, this one. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There's a book here in it was created from animals. The moral implications of Darwinism, and the case is trying to make is that it's very difficult to justify morality from a Darwin perspective. In other words, from an atheistic perspective, where where God is not where God is not involved. Uh, morality without the idea that humans are special is just futile. Mm-hmm. I don't know why I showed you this. But you can go read it. You can go download a PDF or whatever. But my point is, regeneration gives us a new birth. That is a new birth for a Christian. And that puts you to, to a place where you start to desire the things of God. You start to ask yourself, what is the will of God in my life? Rather than what do we want? Now, I believe the book of John is one of the books that I've gone through so, so many times, besides Colossians. <laughs> because I was so obsessed with Colossians, I just couldn't get it out of my mind. Because, again, I think it's because of the same reason by the end. I'll tell you the reason why as you, as you continue doing this. Um, the book of John is one of those books that most preachers, they usually recommend to the new believers who people want to get to know who Christ really is. Yeah. The reason why it is so recommended, and I believe a lot of you can agree, agree with me, is because of the case it presents yeah. for who Jesus is. And it's a very important one for you to understand what Christianity is all about. My main, my main objective by the end of this, we may not even like... But I was thinking of this way. I was thinking, <laughs> if it's just me, if it's just the radical me thinking this out loud, and now I'm thinking it out loud. I was thinking, what if I just come, sit here, 
you just read the book of John until 5:30. <laughs> <laughs> what is the worst that can happen? What is the worst that can happen? Yeah. Number one, you're in my house. You can't do anything about it. <laughs> you actually can't do anything about it. And uh, the second thing is, is the word of God again. What else can you do about it? You know. But but I was just thinking of like pulling that. You know, maybe I will one of these fine days. <laughs> but the main objective, even me thinking that is we usually have a de- deficiency of context especially when it comes to the bible because we have the nature of nitpicking whatever it is that you know out out goes with what what we are thinking about at that time or feeling or something to justify whatever it is that is going on in our lives sometimes it's unconscious sometimes it's we do it like consciously so by reading it all through like we've been taught by our mentor mm-hmm. you get context and it gives you a better understanding of the text mm-hmm. because again the bible is not just uh, a book that is written for you to look like a superhero you take yourself put yourself in a certain situation and yay hooray i am the i am the i am the i am the i am the, I'm the, I'm the john who was you know no no i am the john in the, in this context because we, because we're doing the book of john i am the john who christ beloved more you know and you just dwell there and you have no idea you know what happened way before even you know the bible says that he was you know the one who was beloved mm-hmm. when you get to understand why he was beloved and things like that it starts to to unravel okay and so let's just jump into this it's a good thing that we're giving context uh let me read to you something here from uh, the expositor's bible commentary explain to you what it is all about. It says, no book has been more closely studied over a long period of time than the Bible. On to the present, the scripture have been expounded. Indeed, there have been times when, as in the Reformation, and on occasions since then, exposition has been at the cutting edge of Christian advance. Luther, that is Martin Luther, of the Reformation, was a powerful exegete, and Calvin is still called the Prince of Expositors. And so, our history, our Christi, our our church history has been filled with church fathers that have given themselves to bible ex- exposition they didn't just come and you know r- read one verse and <laughs> and build a whole theology out of it but the history shows that their people gave themselves to exposition of the word of god opening the full counsel of god and that is why we go to the reformation because what happened before the reformation was the catholic church as a whole had closed the word of god from you know from the masses mm-hmm. bible interpretation was uh, was private elite only. Well, yes well, it was for the elites and even so because most people didn't understand uh, uh didn't, didn't, didn't understand latin <laughs> so that was w- one reason because if i write the bible in kijaluo pastor bobby definitely won't read it <laughs> or even if he reads it he won't understand what i'm talking about <laughs> so if i tell him this is what he's saying you know he just he has he just has to believe it you know and so i can come up with so much heresies until people like luther started you know digging into the word and they were like, wait, that's not what he says. Mm-hmm. Wait, wait, wait. Here too, no. This is not what the Bible is all about. Mm-hmm. You know, and then they started, you know, reading the full counsel of God. You know, and later on in their ministries, you know, they've done sermons on a whole book. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, if it is Galatians, Luther has a very good uh, exposition on the book of Galatians. You all should read that because it is part of your church history. You know, it gives you context on, on what those people at that point how they viewed the scriptures, because it is important. In fact, they are much more closer to the first century Christianity than us. In other words, if there are people who are closer to knowing what really happened and what how the Bible was supposed to be uh, 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 to be viewed, their their uh, their their high view of scripture are people who are closer to uh, to to the people who actually wrote the scriptures. You get it? It's like if you want to get uh, what Jesus was all about, if you read the Book of John. Definitely, you are going to, because this guy was not only among the apostles, among among the disciples, but he was the one who was even more beloved. Mm-hmm. Uh, like you get the point. The point is not the beloved part. The point is the proximity. Mm-hmm. You get it. And so that is not only 
uh, proximity like person to person but proximity in timeline and that is the reason why i believe as christians right now it is important that we read these church fathers also so that we understand you know you know the doctrine that has been passed from that point to and then it is good thing also because in the bible uh, in the book of isaiah chapter 51 uh, the bible uh, god says that they should look unto abraham and to Sarah who bore them. Look back to the rock in, from which you are hewn. Mm-hmm. So it, it, it is important that, that, we f- that we follow the pattern mm-hmm. you know, of our history mm-hmm. so that again we see where we go wrong. Mm-hmm. It, is, it is very important because when you, when you look at the thread, God always has a remnant. Mm-hmm. If you look at the thread from the first century to this century, I'm pretty sure even if there's, there was so many uh, fall, fallout in so many places, mm-hmm. you'll always find one thread you know, hata kama saa zingine ilienda mahali kasimama kidogo, ikasimama for like 200 years, you know, what will ipotea but still ikaendelea. Akina Luther, you know, <laughs> picked it up somewhere and continued, you know, so that you know, we can understand all these things. So the Bible, you know, the Bible exposition which uh, is what we are starting to do from today, especially in the, the book of John is uh, is not something we're just starting today. <laughs> <laughs> the one we are starting today, you are starting today, but it is not something that is new. It's not like we're coming up with a, you know, I mean, uh, it's not, it's, yeah, it's not a new revelation. Plus, you know, we've been in teachings where we've done Bible expository from, you know, Pastor Bobby and uh, under teachings of you know, even some um, uh, men of God like uh, Chuck Smith and those people. So uh, it, is the, it is the privilege and duty of every believer to diligently study God's word. It reminds us that along with this privilege comes the responsibility to interpret the Bible correctly. That is our support. That it's not just studying it, mm-hmm. but to interpret it correctly. Mm-hmm. Right? Second Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Those are some of the verses in here. I think to Meshikaga Sana because of the teaching that you've been under. <laughs> and so this is a command to to a young person, Timothy. Paul is writing to Timothy, right? Stand there and show thyself approved as a work might that needed not to be ashamed. So that is something that truth also brings. It casts away shame. So if you study to show thyself approved unto God, then you'll find the truth, right? And when you get that truth, you can't be ashamed. Because, you know, as much as the persecution may be there or, you know, things may not be on, on your favor, you're on the right, you're in the right place. At the end of the book, it's a man. You know, we don't lose. We don't grieve. Our hope is not just on the surface level. Our hope is in eternity. It's not on the death. And, and even if this person died badly and the emperor died honorably, at the end of the day, all of them have died. You can't do anything worse than that. You know, no. And so uh, that is the reason why we need to study the word of God and rightly divide it. Mm-hmm. And you can't rightly divide it if you don't study to show thyself approved. Mm-hmm. Study is not reading. Mm-hmm. Reading is part of the study. Mm-hmm. You know, so they're studying and they're reading. Mm-hmm. People read storybooks. They don't study storybooks. You study storybooks in high school mm-hmm. and people don't like it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but studying is different. Study is in-depth. You have to wake up early. You have to give in time. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, I can actually go and listen to so many sermons. And nee, 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 nee. But I just don't want to base everything that I'm thinking about on the sermon that this man of God taught. Because I also want my reward. Mm-hmm. And so I'm going to do my own studies. I'm going to do research. I'm going to, I'm going to sacrifice my time to get deeper into this. So that at I can be approved as a workman that needed not to be ashamed. So that when I carry the truth, I'm not ashamed. Najua, what I have is the truth, whether people scoff at it, whether people laugh, whether people do what. I have been approved. When you're approved by God, it doesn't matter where you get in. It doesn't matter. You think Paul cared what uh, the people at uh, Athens were thinking? No, he just walked in there. It was like, these are non God. Uh, so let me tell you about him. You know, And he opened the script and people were like, I can't believe this. How dare you? You know, It was like, well. <laughs> you get it so uh, Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 says this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night 
that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then shalt have good success. So that is one. Of, that is the reason why we are here. The introduction to why we are here, so that at least msi nini, uh, confused. Because if we start, <laughs> if we start, if if we, if we start looking at the Bible from our own from the way we want it to look like or want it to sound, then we'll miss a lot of gems that God has put in his word. If it is a historic event, mm-hmm. if it's a historic event, God is not being poetic. Mm-hmm. And most of the time when we start looking at all these uh, modes of the literature in the Bible, and we start putting all of them in one box, then we start thinking that when God created in seven days, it was a poetic thing. God was being poetic. Actually, one day was a thousand years. Because, you know, but God says one day can be a thousand years, and a thousand years can be one day. So we take the elements of poetry, mm-hmm. and we put it in a place where it's a literal thing. And by that, we miss the majesty of God. Because if you think, the one day he was talking about is a thousand years, then... Well, he's not that impressive. <laughs> I mean, like, even myself, if I was given a thousand years to, like, build a garden, dude, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I, I'd, I'd pull something off, man. <laughs> you know, if you've been here for, like, 5,000 years, maybe, or, like, 2,000 years, and you have these scientific marvels, then a thousand years is, is... You get it. So, like, we miss the majesty of God when we put all the interpretation in one box. Like, this verse is supposed to be this and this and this and this and this. If you take it as a historical narrative, then you're like, okay, that is impressive. Now, that explains this and this and this. That explains the, you know, uh, the other chapter in the book of Exodus. And the whole Bible starts to make sense. So, th- those are modes of like expository uh, uh, um, study of the scriptures. But we won't really get into that. Today, we just want to look at the prologue of the book of John. Um, the biggest objection to Christian faith is not that there is God or not. Uh, but if Jesus is exactly who he claimed he was, mm-hmm. and we see this in all, so many cults that we've we've come across, and that is one of the cases that John makes in the book of John. Mm-hmm. It's more like an apologetics kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Not, not on the surface level, but if you study it even in depth, mm-hmm. you see his main intention uh, of writing the book. And... Uh, that is very clear in the book of uh, John chapter 20 verse 31. Somebody can, can be there. John chapter 20 verse 31. Mm-hmm. Why the book of John is being written. Mike, you can read. John yes. But it's a written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing he might have life so this gospel was written at a time when the church was composed of like second-hand Christians. By second, I don't mean like in a bad way. Second, I mean like you know, there's the first generation. Mm-hmm. You know, the people now had received mm-hmm. now the news of the gospel, mm-hmm. and uh, and they needed more detailed instruction about Jesus and new defenses for the apologetic problems raised by apostasy within the church and by the growing opposition from without. So there was opposition that was coming to the church, you know. And just like from the beginning, mm-hmm. the point was, is this Jesus Christ? Mm-hmm. Christ meaning Messiah, mm-hmm. the Savior. So that we may believe that Jesus is the Christ. Is the Christ. Mm-hmm. So we might read that on a, on a, on, on a, on a superficial level and be like, mm, okay, that we may believe that Jesus is the Christ. What does that mean? That we might believe that Jesus, Jesus, the person, is the Christ. The Son of God. So all those three, so Kuna offices Mbili Akuivo. The Christ, that is what he came to do, be, be the Messiah of human beings, and his identity, the Son of God. So all those things like Zina Pelikana, the main intention of the record of that history that is being given in uh in the book of John is so that you can believe. Mm-hmm. Not that you can know. <laughs> so that means 
Now, when you start looking at it from that perspective, then you know every single evidence that is recording about mm -hmm. is towards that claim. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the Christ, mm -hmm. the Son of God. And this is mostly, not just for the skeptics, but for the Christians who had come to faith. Mm -hmm. So it's more like he's writing to his brethren. Mm -hmm. The ones that are, you know, they don't have a very... Because you realize, they didn't have the Bible. <laughs> this was all like, you know, they had all... <laughs> They had all these books that had been written uh, for them to understand what is actually going on with this Christianity thingy. Uh, so John is writing to these guys, telling them, okay, so let me, let me, let me show you that this Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Let's start. <laughs> so when he picks the pen, that is his object, objective, which is also very important when you're starting to talk to somebody about Christianity. What is your objective? Because objective drives the method. Yes, objective drives the method. If your objective is to make somebody feel good, I don't think the cross will be the place you'll start. <laughs> no. You'll tell them, oh, Jesus loves them. Do you know what Jesus, Jesus loves you? You know, so if you just, you know, come to him and, you know, uh, to try him, just try Jesus. <laughs> no, yeah, he'll he'll make he'll make your life comfortable. That is your objective is to just make. It. But if your objective is to save that which has been lost, the Bible says you'll snatch them as if from the fire. When you snatch something from the fire, you don't start pampering the jiko. I know people who are listening. I kind of wondering what is going on, but. I know you know what I'm talking about. So. <laughs> that is the main objective. So, John's objective in this uh, in this book is that they may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. All through his writing, he's uh, indirectly he's trying to make that that claim. In his writing, all through, all through, all through. So that means every single thing that I is just to us to show that, and that is why in this, this is the book where we uh, in the book, John chapter seventeen, when Jesus makes the prayer to his Father, now glorify me, the glory that I had with you from the beginning, so that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and Father. I did not lose anybody because nobody can snatch you from the hand of God. If you if they didn't snatch any one of them from the hand of Christ, then Christ is God. So that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. The prologue of John, it makes a case for the identity of who Christ is because that is important to understand why he's here, why he came. And you may believe that he is who he says he is. Uh, it deals with the identity of Christ as the Logos, the Word made flesh. And uh, John is trying to persuade us of the truth of Christ. And I'll keep on repeating that until it gets to our mind. So that next time when you read the, the book of John, you don't forget the reason why it's written. Because if you forget, that, if you get, if you forget the reason, then you won't even uh, interpret it right. Or you won't understand it right for the intent like uh, Paul says in the book of 1 Corinthians when he starts to write to these people, that I did not come with, to you with fluency of words, but I desire to know nothing of you except Christ crucified according to the scriptures. That is my, obje that is my objective. There's nothing else. So the objective of the writer is very, very important. In the Old Testament also, the law came through Moses so that people may learn to know the holiness of God. You know, in the Old Testament it was written, why? What was the main objective? It's so that people, like Jesus comes and says, in the volume of the book I have come, it is written of me. Mm -hmm. So that was the main objective. of the, And that's why uh, the Pharisees or the people of that time did not know Christ. Because they, made, they, they missed the objective of the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. They missed the objective of the writings of David. And so it is very important for us to know what, okay, why was this written, by the way? Why was Proverbs written? So that the young man can know wisdom. 
So I, I believe that is very important. Um, I don't know if I'm supposed like give you a history of uh, the book of the book of John, but the manuscript for for the book of John was between 80 AD to 100 AD. So it is very very early, very very early. It is not so much uh, it is not so much detached from the time of Christ. Mm-hmm. And again, it's not like the disciples sat down and were like, hmm. I think we should publish a book about what happened. <laughs> and that is why you see it spanned at there was a time there's a there was a time frame for the time that it was written. It was not written immediately. Because the need for that was not yet. Because the first generation Christians were still alive. Most of them were still walking. They had seen the miracles. They had seen Christ crucified. They had seen him resurrected. Over over five hundred people there. So, according to John, there was no need for writing. Until some doubt started settling in the minds of people. People needed more assurance. And then John says, hmm, hold my coat. Let me show you what happened. You get it. So, and that also helps us to understand the scriptures much more better. And what I mean is, it was not a selfish, it was not a selfish ambition to, to lie to people. Because if that was the point, everyone wants to write about it. Because the objective is just to get famous. No, no. Kitu kitu kileze vile tukot na sema earlier on about all these trends that are coming up. TikTok and everything else. Kitu kifanyika, everybody's there. But that is not the case of the Bible. The case of the Bible is not a selfish ambition. Every single letter that was written, every single word that was written was to an intended, to an intended consequence. And in this, in our case here, was to to these believers or the people who are you know being led away by the apostasy that had started so that they might believe you get it mm-hmm. so I, I, be, I believe that is also something that you know from the apologetics perspective you can also use that these people were not just you know after after recognition in fact this guy was, this, 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 this guy was getting old at this point mm-hmm. you know when he's spinning the you know uh, and I'll show you why I say that. Um, so it was written by John, John the disciple of Jesus. So he had first uh, first hand account um, of what was going on. Are you there, John chapter one? Yeah. Yes, Andy. Yo. John chapter one, reading from NHEB. Okay. John chapter one. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and apart from him nothing was made that was that has been made. Yes. In him was life, and the life was the light of humanity. The light shined in darkness, and the darkness comprehended, uh, uh, and darkness hasn't, hasn't, come, hasn't overcome it. Okay, pause there was there there's so much in there (laughs) that you don't want to skip again what i'd like us to have at the back of our mind at this point is john is trying to make a case for the for for who christ is Mm -hmm. so definitely where where are you going to start from in the beginning his identity Mm -hmm. and he's not only starting from the beginning so that he can prove to you it's christ Mm -hmm. he's starting from his identity which goes way before Mm -hmm. in the beginning so he did not go to the beginning and then start looking for Christ there, <laughs> and then try to prove again, which makes the point. He's, this is not like an ambitious. This is not like an ambitious uh, endeavor to to try to, des- to to deceive people, because he's starting from a he's starting from an identity perspective. None of the atheists uh, usually say, you know, I will follow. I follow the evidence, wherever it leads. You know, I will, me, I'm. I don't have a selfish ambition. I will follow the evidence. And you give them evidence and they're like, that is not good enough. <laughs> and they're like, wow, really? You know, like, really? You know, so this guy is actually starting from evidence. He's saying, okay, so let me tell you about this so that you may believe that he's the son of God. Uh, he's, he's the Christ, number one, the son of God. Because he can't be the Christ if he's not the son of God. There are criteria for being the Christ. You can't save people if you're a sinner. You can't save sinners if you're a sinner. 
because who will account for your sins? So, for you to be the Messiah, the Christ, mm -hmm. then you have to be perfectly holy. That means you have to be God. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, he starts from where? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So, number one, in the beginning was the Word. Mm -hmm. So, in the beginning, when the beginning... <laughs> I almost said when the beginning started. <laughs> when the beginning started. <laughs> I have no idea what that is all about. In the beginning, at that point, when the beginning started, which we see in the book of Genesis chapter 1, mm -hmm. and God said, mm -hmm. you, you, can, you can read uh, Genesis chapter 1, bro. 1 verse 1. In the beginning, yes. God created the heaven and the earth. There we go. In the beginning, God created the heaven. Now, in that beginning was the word. In other words, when everything else started, at that point where everything else started, he was there. He was there. So that means he didn't start with everything else. Mm -hmm. When everything else started, mm -hmm. if everything else started at one second, mm -hmm. the micro, he was there the microseconds before. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You see? Mm -hmm. And so this whole idea with the Jehovah's Witness, they're saying that Jesus was first created. And then he created everything else. And then it's like, it's like wow, really? It's like God creates somebody and then through him he creates everything else. Really? Like, that doesn't even make sense. Yeah, why? In fact, for him to get all the glory, he'll just create everything else. You know? Because the Bible says that he doesn't share his glory with anyone. It doesn't make sense. God does not, not even with angels, he does not. Because again, there's nothing else. Outside of God, there's nothing holier. There's nothing perfect. There's nothing beautiful outside of him. It does not exist. Even the glory of angels proceed from him. That's why you can't worship angels. Because they don't have anything outside of God. Of their own. They don't have anything of their own. Do you get it?